Well, I don't like to talk about analysts too much here at Nintendo Prime because all they are doing is looking at a given set of data and making predictions. Now, some of these analysts are paid a lot of money for these predictions because they tend to be pretty accurate. And the reason that analysts make the money that they do is because the predictions they make are the kind of things that make people money. They, they tell you how to invest, where to put your money. Should you put it in Nintendo? Should you put it in Sony? Should you invest in Niantic with Pokemon Go? It, it, it's generally good to listen to people who, for a living, follow the industry trends and try to predict where things are going. Because a lot of us, that's not what we do, right? I sit here and I talk about Nintendo all day, but I don't sit here and analyze every ounce of financial information about Nintendo to see where they might be going in the future and to try to predict when they're going to rise and when they're going to fall. However, others do. And today I want to talk about one of those analysts. He's pretty well known, uh, mostly thanks to his days when he used to have his show over at Game Trailers, Mr. Michael Pachter. And I know some of you guys are cringing. I'm even bringing up Michael Pachter. How many times has he been wrong? Well, how many times has he also been right? So that, that, that's usually the biggest conundrum when talking about Michael Pachter is, yes, he's been wrong a ton of times. None of those times have anything to do with his job. That's just on his talk shows. But still, he's been wrong a lot, and he's also been right a lot. And I feel like it's worth talking about uh, what he brings up because I, I'd like to discuss the general health of the industry. And in this case, there was a fan on his new show over at Sifted, and I'll put a link down to it in the description, where a fan asked him, does he think that the Nintendo Switch is going to outsell the Xbox One? Well, here, I will let Michael Pachter himself give his answer. Our next question from Sifted from Substance104. Will Nintendo Switch sell more than Xbox One worldwide this year? Close. Um, close. I'd say Switch could sell as many as 14 million, and if that happens, that's more than Xbox One. Um, Xbox One's probably going to sell about 10, 11 million. Um, but again, Microsoft doesn't tell you and there's no way to measure anymore. Um, but I'd say Xbox One is on track for 10, 11 million a year. Switch is going to do that many, 10, 11. It could sell more. Um, it really depends and, and I need to get through a holiday season and see. Um, my bias is that Switch is a handheld and it's a really good handheld, but it's 300 bucks. Xbox is a really good console and it's 300 bucks. So if you want a console, you're buying an Xbox, you're not buying a Switch. If you want a handheld, you're buying a Switch, you're not buying an Xbox. So close, but I think that the portability of the Switch probably slightly dictates in its favor. I think the Japanese market you know, is gonna buy three or four million of them as opposed to, ultimately, as opposed to um, Microsoft that's probably not even sold a million there yet. You know, so it, it, there's a lot more demand in Japan for Nintendo-based products. I mean, DS sells, well, not anymore, but DS has sold probably 20 million in Japan in lifetime. So yeah, I think it'll probably sell slightly more, but it's not gonna sell, you know, 2X or 3X. And over time, I think the Switch will be fine. I mean, it'll do 50 million um, if, it, if price comes down the curve. Uh, question is, will it do 100? I don't think so. And that's 20 million a year. 10 million a year for five years, for sure. 20 million a year ever? Probably not. So when people talk about this thing being as big as the Wii, they're crazy. All right. So as you can see, he sees some good things for the Switch. Not as good as Nintendo, right? Nintendo's goal is to have it be another Wii, another 100 million unit seller. And he doesn't see that happening, but he sees easily 50 million. That puts it up into 3DS territory, which is really good. And that I mean, that is slightly below, you know, slightly ever so slightly below the PlayStation 4 right now. However, you have to remember that if he's thinking it's going to sell possibly 14 million, if it could stay around that 14 million mark, now you're talking about it outselling the PlayStation 4. So it's really interesting that he feels like it could outsell the Xbox One. Obviously, we already know it's moved over a million units in Japan uh, faster than the PlayStation 4 did, and the Xbox One has still not even come close to a million units. So Nintendo's already going to have a huge advantage there. Plus, this is before we even get to Splatoon 2 and, you know, Monster Hunter 
and you know Pokemon's going to be hitting in a couple years. Like there's going to be some huge games driving sales in Japan, but it's very interesting just looking at the general health of the video game industry, right? Because he brings up a point in there about how if you want a home console, Xbox One is now three hundred dollars, and if you want a portable, you get a Switch, and I, I still. I'm still a little unsure on on that aspect of things because the Switch is a hybrid, right? There's no doubt it's a portable. Like, when you pull that thing out of the box, Joy-Con's on, that thing's a portable system. But it also docks with your TV and works as a home console. Now, obviously not as powerful as the Xbox One or the Xbox One X coming out or the PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation 4 Pro, but those systems are also not portable. So, like, there's a trade-off for the portability factor compared to the home console factor in terms of cost to produce. You know, yes, the Switch might feel like it's a little overpriced at 300 but if you actually look at what's inside of it and you look at comparable other portable devices, it's really not overpriced at all but unfortunately some people don't understand that mobile tech is actually more expensive to make than the tech that's inside like an xbox one now when we look at all of this data all i can think of is the industry is in a good place isn't it i mean the playstation 4 is doing fantastic the 3DS is still kicking it. It's still doing, you know, solid. It's still the worst selling Nintendo handheld system of all time, but not by much anymore, right? It, it's almost at 70 million units. Uh, you know, we're we're looking at a pretty healthy system that's finally about to reach, you know, where Game Boy hit, and we're we're looking at a time when Nintendo is re, is not only having those continued 3DS sales, they're resurging with Switch sales here, and we're looking at a time when we might have the most popular Zelda game ever created sitting on store shelves now, you know, not Ocarina of Time, not Twilight Princess from but a brand new Zelda game that might outsell both of them when it's all said and done. We're talking about a system that's still sold out in most stores four months later. I mean, this system didn't release during the holiday period. It released in spring, and now we're well into summer, or well, not really well into, but a decent amount into summer, about a month, and we're still not able to find the system. And it's really interesting just to, to see the see the back and forth that's going on and you know the xbox is actually selling really really well in the united states a little bit better in europe uh, but the united states is really the driving force behind the xbox brand whereas playstation 4 has generally sold well in all territories uh, japan a little slower only close to 5 million or so in japan but i mean that's really good for home console in japan home consoles don't really sell in japan uh switch as, since nintendo's advertising it as a home console will probably become the, the most popular you know, quote unquote home console in Japan in like the last 20 years or something. But yeah, I, I have to say, I'm pretty thrilled uh, at the idea. And then Nintendo has publicly stated 10 million units is their goal for this fiscal year. So that doesn't count the launch sales. That puts it at the end of the fiscal year around 13 million units. And Pactor thinks they could pull off 14 this year. That would mean 17 million units by the end of this fiscal year total. That is, I mean, that's crazy to think that Nintendo within its first full calendar year or like full calendar year plus a month you know so we're talking about 13 14 months we're talking about 17 million potential units sold during that time and yes that isn't the 20 million you know that nintendo needs to hit 20 million per year to hit you know over a five-year span 100 million but still that's awesome the fact that the switch in its first year might potentially outsell the sales of the xbox one this year is insane now is it going to outsell the playstation 4 <laughs> probably not uh, and I say that just because PlayStation 4 is a pretty strong library of games coming, and we still have all the huge games coming this holiday. Now, as he mentioned, holiday is going to be the big telling factor, right? If the Switch can become the number one selling system during the holiday season, now you're talking about how the Switch might potentially be able to even outsell the PlayStation 4 this fiscal year. Uh, but it's going to be tough. There's no Call of Duty. There's no Assassin's Creed. All, all these huge games that are coming out this year that are not going to land on Switch are going to be a deterrent to buying a Switch. Uh, but, you know, Nintendo's kind of punching back. They've got their Super Mario Odyssey. That's going to be a huge title. They've got Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Not necessarily as big of a title as Mario. Not even close, to be honest. But it's still a title that's going to help drive sales. they got their Hyrule Warriors. Not the Hyrule Warriors. I'm sorry. Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, they have their own big titles hitting. Uh, they also get NBA 2K18, which I'm hoping that I'm. I really hope it does well because I want to see all future NBA 2K games on Switch. I, I I think Nintendo is in a position where they have a a, a puncher's chance at leading 
in in console sales this holiday and you know to be honest it really doesn't matter who leads right what matters is that all three of the console makers are having healthy sales and that's the market i want to live in i want to live in a market where nintendo xbox and playstation all matter at the same time and the last time that happened really was the wii era but the way that nintendo mattered during that era I think it was a turnoff for a lot of people because they mattered in a way that they were worried about expanding the audience. And I know that that's what a lot of people think the Switch is doing, right? Expanding the audience. And I understand the arguments for that. But I just keep looking at the lineup of games and I'm like, which one of these games is exactly supposed to appeal to my mom? What? Which one's supposed to appeal to my non-gaming sister? Which one of these games is supposed to appeal to... You know, my grandma, none of these games that are coming out on Switch really have any appeal factor to the same audience that the Wii games did. You know, Wii Sports appealed to literally everyone. And Breath of the Wild, I'm sorry, it doesn't appeal to literally everyone. Mario Kart is the closest thing to appealing to everyone, but it still doesn't necessarily draw my mom in or my dad in. You know, this isn't a system that is expanding the audience in the same way the Wii did. So I feel like... We're at a point now where Nintendo might finally have a system that gamers care about. And it might finally have a system that oh, not only do gamers care about, but is selling well. And then an Xbox that could be selling well. I mean, Microsoft's releasing the Xbox One X this year, right? That's got to sell at least decent numbers for the launch month. There's got to be enough gamers that actually care about 4K gaming to get it, right? I mean, I care about 4K gaming. I want an Xbox One X. That doesn't mean I'm going to play my Switch any less, of course. I just want to live in a market where all three matter. And I feel like right now all three matter, and I'm hoping all three matter by the end of this fiscal year. And we're talking about uh, console sales that are comparable to each other. Instead of talking about PlayStation 4 sold 25 million this fiscal year, Xbox One sold 10 million, and the Switch sold 5 million. Like that's not, to me, that's not a healthy market because healthy markets drive healthy competition, drive better innovation for consumers and more games for consumers and everything that, that that's good about a healthy competitive market is really really good for consumers anyway this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime if you like this video you know what to do if you hate this video I totally understand plenty of you guys probably do not like Michael Pactor and if you want to support us, head on over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For just $5 a month, you can get early access to our full podcast, not the segmented version we put on YouTube, every Sunday or the Sundays of the week that we have a podcast coming out. Because again, we have to hit our $100 Patreon goal to ensure our podcast comes out every single week. That being said, I hope to catch you guys in the next one.